Let's implement two-factor authentication via email. The goal is to send an email to the user whenever they try to log in with some kind of code that they can enter uh, to be fully authenticated. I've made some updates behind the scenes and sort of implemented the UI for it. So if we try to log in in here, you see that we get this pop-up where we have to enter the two-factor authentication code. Of course, this does not work yet. That's what we're going to implement. It's just the UI part that I did behind the scenes. First, I modified the attempt method within the auth class. As you can see, it no longer returns a boolean true or false. Now it returns an enum auth attempt status and it's either failed, two-factor auth or success. In here, we check if the user has two-factor authentication enabled and if the user does, then instead of logging the user in, we return this two-factor auth enum. Now this method I added behind the scenes as well. So if we open the user entity and search for that method, we see that it's not implemented. It simply just returns true right now. But later you could implement this to be part of the users table and toggle it on and off from the user profile page that you can build. Then within the auth controller, the login method got updated because attempt login no longer returns the boolean true or false, instead it returns the enum. So we have to check if it's failed, then we throw validation exception. Otherwise, if it's two-factor authentication, then we return JSON with two-factor set to true. And otherwise, we just return empty JSON, basically indicating that the user has been logged in. Of course, I had to make this adjustment on the front end as well, because before, if you remember, this was not an Ajax call. It was just a regular form uh, submission. So I had to convert that to be an Ajax call instead. And finally, within the auth.js, I had to add these event listeners for the login button to make the initial Ajax call to login. And if the response contains two-factor, then we show the two-factor auth model, the one that you just saw. And then we have another click event listener on the login two-factor button. That's the button within the model. So when that's clicked, it makes the post request to login two-factor. And if it's successful, it redirects to the home page. Now, this route is something that we need to implement. So if we go to web.php, we see that we have that post route right here. So we need to implement this two-factor login method on the auth controller. You can see the full changes if you want to, to compare it to your code and make those changes in your repository. If you're following along, you can do basically a comparison uh, between the branches. So you can compare P31 start branch with the P30 end branch to see the difference. And then you can add those changes manually to your code base. I did this behind the scenes because I didn't want to spend time building it during the video. It's not as important. The logic behind it that powers the 2FA is what's important and that's what we're going to cover now. Before implementing this method, we actually need to implement this part in here within the auth class. So if the user has two-factor authentication enabled, we need to do something and then we return the two-factor auth. So in here, maybe we can call some kind of method like this start login with 2FA and pass the user instance. Because remember in here, we have to figure out how to send an email to the user with the code. So that's why we need to implement this part here before we implement anything with the controller. In this method, we need to send the email with the code and we should also store the user ID within the session so that we can check later if this user has to go through the 2FA or not. So first we'll regenerate the session ID. So we'll do session regenerate and then we'll do this session put 2FA and save the user ID. Then we need to send the email right here. Now we can create an email class for this that will be responsible for drafting and sending out uh, the two-factor verification email. So what we're going to do is that we're going to inject the email class in here. We already have the signup email, so we can do something similar. We can duplicate this and call this two-factor auth email. Let's change that two-factor auth email. We can duplicate this and call it two-factor auth email and we'll adjust it here according to our needs. First, we'll replace the subject with something like your expenses verification code. Then we'll replace the template with two-factor HTML twig and the two-factor HTML twig I added behind the scenes as well. So if we open that up here, we see that it's just a basic template that provides them the verification code. 
There are different ways to do this. Some like to have a column on the users table and store the code there, while some prefer to have a dedicated table to store those codes. I prefer to have a dedicated table because it makes auditing and troubleshooting easier. So why don't we, instead of accepting the user entity here, we accept some sort of user login code and then get the code from this entity. So we could do something like user login code get code. So let's create this entity. We're going to create class within the entities. Let's make this entity table is user login codes. Then we're just going to fill in some properties or columns here. So we'll do private int ID, private string code, private bool is active because we want to have ability to deactivate the login codes. Then we have private date time expiration because login codes have to have the expiration date and finally we'll map it to the user entity let's add the definitions here so this is going to be many to one this is going to be column this is going to be column as well but the name will be is underscore active this is going to be column let's set the length to maybe six and this is going to be id column with generated value all right, let's generate the getter and setter methods now. So we'll do alt insert getters and setters. We'll generate it for all. All right, now that we have the entity, let's create the service class that will allow us to generate the new code. We're going to have a constructor here and we'll inject the entity manager service interface because we're going to need that private read only entity manager service interface. Let's add a new method here called generate. So public function generate, and this will accept the user instance or user entity as an uh, argument. And it's going to return the user login code object. Now in here, we need to create the new user login code object. So we'll do user login code equals new user login code. And we just need to set some of the values. So we'll do user login code set code and we'll create the code in a bit then we'll do user login code set expiration and by default i think we should expire within maybe 10 or 20 minutes for now let's set it to 10 minutes then we'll associate it with the user so we'll do set user user and finally we'll sync it with the database using the entity manager service and we'll return the user login code object all right, now as far as the code goes, we could generate this code in many different ways. I'm going to use random int function and for a minimum, we'll set it to 100,000 because we want it to be six digits. And for a maximum, it will be 999,999. Now, because I defined the code to be string, we need to cast this to string. We could also change the type to be integer in the database, but I want to keep it a string in case we decide to change this to include letters later on. Now in our email class, two-factor auth email, we can get the email of the user by getting the user relationship first. So we'll do get user, get email, and we have the get code. We don't need this activation link, so let's actually get rid of it from here. Now let's call this send method from the auth class. So within our auth.php, we can import the two-factor auth email, scroll down, and we'll send it in here. So we'll do this two-factor auth email, send, and we need the user login code. So we actually need to inject the user login code service and call generate on it. So let's scroll up, we'll inject it here, and we'll do this user login code service generate and pass the user. Great, so let's actually test this out to ensure that it actually works and the email is sent with the generated code. We need to first run the diff command to generate the proper migration. So we'll do php expenies diff and we're getting no identifier primary key specified for the user login code entity. Did I forget to define that? Let's open it. Oh yeah, it's missing the column in here. So let's do column and actually let's make this unsigned. So we'll do options unsigned true. Let's try it again. And this time it worked. Let's run the migrations now. So we'll do PHP expenies migrate. That worked. Let's open the browser, try to log in. And seems like that didn't work. Let's open DevTools, 
try to log in again we're getting 500 error code let's inspect the error and the error states that is active cannot be null oh that's right we didn't really set the is active value so let's go back to code we can create a constructor here so we'll do construct and set the is active to true by default let's try it again log in we're getting the pop-up so that means that the email should have went out let's switch to mail hog and we have the email and there is the code now if i take this code and paste it into here this of course won't work because we haven't implemented the verification part yet let's do that in the next lesson